Good morning. Thank you for tuning into Virtual Storytime with the National Railroad Museum. I'm your host, Engineer Alyssa. If you are watching this live on Facebook, please leave a comment below to let us know that you're here and share it with your friends. We also like to invite you to like our page and to follow us so you can see all of the cool things that are happening at the museum. The National Railroad Museum is a nonprofit organization supported by private and public donations and by our members. For more information about supporting the museum or becoming a member, please visit our website at nationalrrmuseum.org. This is our story for today. A Train Goes Clackety Clack by Jonathan London. And um, they talk a little bit about um, eating on a train in this book. It's just on a couple pages, but a long time ago, not too long, but probably about 100 years ago when train travel was very important. That's how people got around. They would eat full meals on trains and they would have the best chefs in the world on these trains to cook fancy meals and they would have multiple courses and the best china to eat on and everything would be just perfect. They even had all of the plates and the silverware um, measured out um, perfectly so that everything was in line and perfect for the passengers because they wanted all of the passenger experience to be the best. Um, I know that we have our drumhead gallery in um, the museum, so if you ever uh, want to when the museum opens up again, go and see the drum heads. Um, that's all about passenger travel. And we like to talk about dining on a passenger car when I bring um, kids groups in there. And we like to talk about what you would eat on a train. So what's your favorite food and what would you eat on a train? I know my favorite food is pizza. I love pizza. It's my favorite food ever. And that's what I would like to eat on a train. So if you want to comment below what you would eat on a train, you are more than welcome to tell me what you would eat. Um, yeah, so our book, A Train Goes Clackety Clack. All right. A train could be old. Or a train could be new. That looks more like a high speed train. A train could have one engine. Or a train could have two. So we see the one on the bottom right there. Here's one engine. Oops, right here. And then one right here. And then the one at the top only has one engine. A train could be fast like a silvery gleam. The silvery gleam part kind of reminds me of our aero train. Or a train could be slow like a lazy stream. A train goes chugga chugga and a train goes clickety clack. A train goes jingly rumba, rumba on down that long track. A train hauls cattle and a train hauls steel. See all the cattle. And a train carries people who sit for a meal. Here's our dining car that we were just talking about. People would sit and have meals and have breakfast and dinner. Sometimes a train would even serve a three pound baked potato. Those are really, really big. A train wheels clatter and a train's couplings clang. So a coupler is what holds that train together, the different cars. A 
train boiler hisses, a train bumpers bang. Trains crawl up and trains roar down. So sometimes trains have to go through the mountains. Our Union Pacific Big Boy was made to go through the mountains, the Wasatch Mountains. Trains blow whistles, choo choo, and rumble through town. If I were an engineer, I could make the train go. Or I could swing a red lantern and watch the night glow. And I think that's our last page. And sometimes people even sleep on trains. So there, it looks like they're just taking a little nap. I know that um, we heard the coupler in the story go clang, clang. I always like to, when I bring kids groups into the museum, if you make C's with your hands for coupler, um, they kind of attach like this. So that's kind of like how the train cars attached to each other so it's like this and then they can pull each other so that's kind of a cool way to think of a coupler um i want to thank you for tuning in with me this morning i will be posting a craft down below and on our website my other story times are there and on youtube um i'll be here every day this week um still at 10 o'clock in the morning so i'm excited for everybody to keep on joining me for story time i have a lot of cool books coming up um, different ones. And I just want to thank everybody for um, watching me and supporting the museum. So thank you and I'll see everybody tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. Bye!